<laughs> Today is August 19, 2009. It is 5.36 p.m. This is a regular board meeting of the Brownsville Navigation District. Uh, Mr. Chavez, would you lead us in a prayer, please? Absolutely. Let's all stand and bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to get uh, together together to make the decisions that uh, this city and this port in particular needs. Uh, we know that we can count on your guidance and we ask for that at this moment. We, we beg for your wisdom and your direction in every decision that is to be made today. We also beg you, Father, to continue to bless us and to continue to allow us to recover from the economic crisis that has hit the nation. And we thank you for helping the port stay afloat as we have so far. Please continue to be with us, continue to lead us through this board, continue to bless each of the families here represented. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Let me just, I'd like to make a brief comment. Uh, we have one of our board employees, Mr. Lopez, uh, uh, was ill and is in the hospital, and we just like to send them on behalf of uh, myself and the board and, and the rest of the employees at the board uh, uh, that he gets better and we'll wish him uh, well being. Um, now we have a, uh, we're going to be swearing in some officers. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, yep. Commissioners. Uh, we have three officers that will be sworn in. We're going to be sworn in one at a time. Okay, the, the first officer, the, these police officers, uh, like all our police officers, first became security guards at the Port of Brownsville. From being security guard, they went to UGB, uh, to the police academy. Uh, one went to the Harlingen Police Academy. And from then, now, we have promoted them from security guards to, to police officers. So it's, we have a continuing education. We have two guards right now that are going to UGB. And we have one that in October starts the police academy. Yeah. And they, they get certified. If there's ever an opening, they can come in. But just learn a lot more and it's just continuing education for them. The first one is uh, uh, Pablo Medrano comes again back to us. Uh, he was he was with us and uh, Mr. Medrano, a, gradu a graduate from high, uh, Lopez High School, attended UTB. He has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Uh, he went to the uh, UTB Police Academy he started as a security guard in 2005 with us. And uh, in 2006, he went to the police academy. Then he went on in 2008 to go work for the Cameron County Probation, I mean, Cameron County Juvenile Probation Office. But he liked police work more, so we had an opening. He, he said to come back, Mr. Melvin. OK. So if you could uh, just uh, follow uh, the oath. This is the oath of office. I state your name. I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties. And I will faithfully execute the duties of peace officer of the state of Texas. Of peace officer of the state of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my, my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. The Constitution and the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Our, our second officer is Rolando Doria. Mr. Doria is a graduate of Homer Hanna High School. He joined the U.S. Army in 1999 to 2004, 2003-2004, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, 2005, 2006, he attended career centers while working in Valley Baptist Medical Center. He started at the police academy, no, he started as a security guard in 2007, 
He went to the UTV Police Academy, graduated uh, one of the top of his class with an 86. He's also a peace officer and just been promoted. Okay. Repeat after me. I. I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of peace officer, the duty of peace officer of the state of Texas, of the state of Texas, and will to the best of my ability, I will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States, the Constitution and laws of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Next one is Edgar Garcia. Mr. Garcia graduated from Rivera High School. Attended, U, attended UTV, has 30 hours, and is continuing his education. He attended the Lower Rio Grande Valley Police Academy in Hardingen. Graduated with an 85.5 from his class. He's a certified peace officer. He started with us in 2008 and not being promoted to peace officer. He's also uh, has a lot of knowledge in computers and, and is going to be working and helping us with all the new high-tech equipment that we've gotten. And, He's very much involved with, with all that. Very good. So repeat that for me. I. I, Edgar Garcia. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of peace officer. The duties of peace officer. Of the state of Texas. Of the state of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Mr. Garcia was involved in the 800 pounds of marijuana that, were, that was just uh, confiscated at the uh, rail yard uh, uh, last, uh, this past weekend, which was approximately 700 pounds of marijuana. And uh, they were out there, and, and, uh, and so was uh, the assistant of the sheriff's office and U.S. Customs. There were 13, 13 rail cars with 23 bundles underneath, so that's what it works. You guys want to take some pictures? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do it? Charges in order to back. Are we going to sit again behind you guys? Okay. All right. Well, Eddie, you're going to have to just stand. Yeah, I'll, I'll just stand. Just stand. Mando, I'll just scoot your chair in. I'll be in. Yeah, I'll stand. There you go. Was a Wall Street Journal. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I may make a comment before I kind of go. I think that, you know, as George stated, all of these uh, fine officers started with us. Uh, early in their careers uh, in the security department and they've gone on to get their education and, and gotten to be and I think that's uh, a great testament to uh, promote wherever we can the opportunity for our existing employees to grow and to uh, uh, be able to further their careers and of course it's it's always a challenge in law enforcement especially with as much um, you know, uh, federal opportunity that may be here but Nonetheless, we're proud of them, and they've served us well, and I'm sure they'll continue to serve us well in the future. So again, gentlemen, congratulations.
Uh, I, I also wanted under this option to recognize uh, a warrant officer, Jay uh, Spurgeon. Uh, he replaces uh, Troy Rents, if you recall, the uh, honored uh, uh, warrant officer uh, Rents when he retired. And so uh, 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 warrant officer Spurgeon is going to be replacing. He's uh, come off a vessel. He's, he was telling me he's 19 years in the service with the guard, all of it on a vessel. So he's got land legs now for, for a full week. And he, kind of for me, and he was commenting on how cool the breeze is down here. <laughs> And certainly, we're uh, uh, we're welcome, and uh, we're always here to assist. And the Coast Guard has been a great partner in the port, and uh, continue to be so. I'm sure under his leadership. So, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you, you very much. Welcome, welcome, welcome aboard. Welcome ashore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's take item number six. Item number six: discussion of extension of utilities to the public boat ramp on SH48. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, if you recall, um, in July we, we actually had uh, uh, plans that were presented for the improvements, the park improvements at the public boat ramp that uh, you all uh, approved. And, and since then, uh, if you were, part of those plans included doing some uh, um, solar lighting at, at the uh, public boat ramp. Uh, what has happened since is that the discussion has ensued involving. Uh, uh, the county, uh, the, the public utility board, and ourselves about the possibility of extending services, electrical service, to the public boat ramp. And in doing so, uh, 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 it would kind of, uh, I guess, change a little bit of the specifications as the, the current project is now designed. Uh, the intent, is, as I understand it, and I know that James McCann, the director of uh, uh, um, the electrical service department with PDB, is here as, as, as is. Uh, uh, Jesse Alfada with PUB, and, and uh, I'm not going to speak for the county because Javier is here with the county park system, but uh, um, uh, have been some discussion about moving forward with that, and uh, the intent is to try to go ahead and, and do that uh, extension uh, within the state right of way, but we thought it was important to, one, uh, make you aware of, of the change in plans in the event that we may have to uh, take some action as it relates to you know, possibly providing of the electrical lines to the site. Uh, the benefit to the port, obviously, is that uh, it does provide service on the uh, north side of the channel, uh, and, and certainly at, at some point in time, uh, the development potential of some of that property east of the fishing harbor is, is going to come into play. And it would be electrical service there. It, it makes it that much more enhancing. Um, so uh, with that, I, I think I'll just, uh, Javier, if you want to speak to the issue, I mean, I, I really don't know other than where we are with the, with the project at present, but uh, that is the intent, is to uh, try to look at, at, at accomplishing that and, and uh, making you all aware of it in the event that we have to act quickly or possibly take some action to help uh, facilitate the uh, extension of the utility service to the site. Chairman, Commissioners, thank you. Um, Yes, we, we've, uh, we've discussed it. You know, originally the plans were because of the, the lack of, of electrical service out there. We designed it for solar power. Um, but during um, uh, some issues that came up in our first progress meeting with the contractor, the contractor had suggested that we meet with PUB and maybe consider uh, extending the utilities or electricity actually up to the site. Um, so he uh, instigated the meeting with, with uh, Eddie and, and PUB um, and requested, you know, that uh, I guess would be placed on the agenda. But um, I think right now we're uh, it's like sixty-four thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. Is that right, uh, Andy? Sixty-four at PUB proposed. No, sixty-four is what you have in your budget for the improvements to the lighting. I, I think the estimate that was uh, said was somewhere between seventy-five to seventy-eight thousand. Well, what's in our budget is seventy-three for the okay. for the lighting. Uh, the seven poles, like the, the solar panels, but I guess we still need to do some some work on this and try to figure out what the cost savings is and what it's going to cost us to extend the utilities out there. And we also need to find out is if um, if we're going to be installing the poles ourselves, um, or if we're going to be uh, getting service from PUB where we just pay them a lump sum on a monthly basis. So we, need, we need to work out all the details, but we want to move this first or get this to this first step. And, and request uh, to get, see if we get authorization from, from the, uh, the board 
uh, to move forward on this and, and see if this is even, even an option. I mean, we're going to have street street lighting there for the egress and, and to, to access and egress to the, the property to come in and out of the boat ramp onto 48, off 48. There'll be lighting there of some sort so that that, that junction there is lit up at night so people can oncoming traffic and see somebody coming out yes yes and it will and and the the uh, we have seven poles that we have proposed so that small area is a little bit over an acre you know so the seven poles will illuminate quite a bit um you know solar power solar lighting i think is a little bit less but if you get to the standard lighting what we're hoping is if you have electrical <coughs> service there, then the tech stop would be able to respond to some of the concerns that you've raised and the county has raised in the past about some uh, signalization <coughs> there to warn uh, traffic uh, or, or motorists that you've got people going in and out of it. Uh, and so with that, it certainly makes it a lot easier to address those concerns. My feeling is anything we can do to access to get public our owners of our port access to the water and, and especially in a safe manner i would like to make a motion that we uh, take action on this is a discussion, discussion. Yeah, oh, it's a discussion. Any, okay yeah, it's, well anyway you have my full support well, maybe we could get text out to put some some warning some solar warning lights on either side yeah. um, just like they do at the, at the bridge and the island. Uh, you know, they have, I think those are solar power. Kind of power of correct, I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, anything we can do to help the county work with tech stuff, I have to drive by there every day. I know Don has to drive by there every day. Right now, construction's going on, so you don't have to fight cars coming in and out of there, but it's extremely dangerous. It's going to even be more dangerous. It's because there's going to be a lot more usage. Well, there's, there's probably be more usage. There's going to be a nice facility, and, and that's what we want. But uh, you know, I think we would have access to electricity <coughs> through the fishing harbor and there to all of our land. Sure. We'd have electricity right there. So Absolutely. I, I think it's a it's real win-win-win situation. Win, win situation. Win, win. Sure. I yeah. think that, that we just absolutely need to do this. So just the grant amount that you talk about on the agenda item, what was the grant amount that was secured? The entire? Yes, sir. It's uh, 466000 It's a little bit more with the engineering cost, but the actual cost, uh, I mean, the uh, contract that we have at Terry Ray is about 466000 And And the other thing, uh, if I may mention, is um, what this would help us is with the restrooms that we're installing out there. It's a um, self-contained unit, and the state is requiring us to have an alarm system on it. So when it gets to 75% capacity, then it, there's an alarm that goes off, and then we have to go out there and pump it out. So, and it's, and that, it's, that, that alone, yeah. and it's difficult, go back to the public. Right. It's difficult because <laughs> if we, um, um, the engineers are having a real difficult time trying to create a, a, or design something where the solar system will, will activate this alarm. Um, so it's, it, was, it wouldn't work, it was just difficult for them. So, Let's put electricity out there. Yeah. <laughs> people coming out of the street thing is not getting out. It's not going to work. Does Lance, do you have anything to say? We're, we're ready to move ahead. Uh, we can serve the, the project at the Highway 48 side. Uh, we cannot serve the, the full uh, one acre parcel. So you probably have to put up your own light somewhere yeah. here. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we recognize our, our county commissioner, Ms. Uh, Sofia Benavides. She's always behind the scenes working on these projects, and I know that uh, almost every project that we've had here, or even uh, a grand opening that we've had, she's always been here, and she's definitely taken a big interest in making the Port of Brownville a good place for everybody. Absolutely. On the subject of Mr. Chairman, I might have already said to recognize him. other elected officials in the, in, the, in the room, Mayor Vega from Port Isabel. Oh, that's right. Here and he was here. We'd like to thank him because he was the very first one to, you know, we finally got the cruise line committee put together and yes. we're moving forward. And Mayor Vega was, his leadership, the first action that he wanted to take as a mayor was 
move forward and help me move this and, and work with me hand in hand. And, and thank you very much, Mayor. That was, we really appreciate that. that was good. We, we just can't wait to bring the yeah, chip take in. It, that first step, is, <laughs> the first step is the hardest one. So, yeah, you know, I appreciate you took the first step and we appreciate it. We we'll never forget Thanks. it. We appreciate all your hard work, too. So. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and I'm also the deputy park director for the county, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I wear one cat this way, the other one that way. It's the sign of a small town. <laughs> yeah. It's good to have you both. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you all very much. So again, if uh, just to let you know, we'll be working with the county and PUB and trying to do what we can to move the project forward. And if there's any action down the road necessary on behalf of this commission, we'll, we'll bring it back to you. Please do. Very good. Yeah. Thank Just you. Do it as quickly as it does. Don't, don't let any delays happen. Let's get it. Please. That's right. Want it open by what December? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if there's any delays, we don't want it to be on our hat. On our That's right. We're, we're gonna, yeah. so, Mr. Chairman, uh, since we're talking about electrical and so forth, there is item 11 as well as the development of the TV involved. Uh, Relocation of power poles for our Hostess Road, the internal road project. Item number 11 consideration and action to request an approval of the Hostess Road project. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Board Commissioners, um, this item is basically something that we've been uh, talking about for a while. Um, sorry. Um, this item is something that we've been talking about for a while related to the uh, to the port roads. Uh, part of the um, information that I need to share with you today is that uh, the port roads project was bid last week at uh, Texas District in Austin. Uh, Y'all already know the numbers. <laughs> The, uh, the engineer's estimate was 4.6, which was the allocated funding for construction, about 4.6 million rounding. Uh, the low bid was 3.3, uh, so that freed up some, some allocated funding. We were concerned as to where we were going to be able to fund the pole relocations here with the PUB. Um, from that 1.3 that we quote unquote saved, we're, we're going to spend about 420, 430,000 on, on material that we're going to be furnishing the contract. Just that switch of us furnishing it allowed us a savings of nearly half a million dollars if we had let the contractor be the furnisher and installer of that. Of that. And uh, you know, I can bring you more numbers when we actually do the um, presentation. But uh, the work that we're talking about on this item, which is the relocation of the poles on Ulster's Road, the PUB has estimated $342,000 to do that work. Um, and uh, obviously from this, uh, oh, you know, almost $900,000 that we now have freed up, we, we can do that. So, uh, you know, yes, sir. I have a question. I know we also have a grant to put those lines underground. So I'm hoping, oh, I, I'll, am I jumping ahead on you? You yes. are a little bit. But okay, <laughs> go ahead then. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to... So what it is on, on the grant, you know, to, to, to bring it to light, what it is on the grant is, the, uh, I, I'm not sure we have the grant. Do we know yet? No. Yeah. Okay, so we have, we have only applied for the grant, and it looks very good, but we don't know that we're going to get the grant yet. However, because of the time logistics, it's going to be pretty much uh, a, a, a requirement for us to do the poll relocations anyway. Uh, in fact, I, I had a meeting with the uh, PUB uh, gentleman this morning about that. We can recover, you know, if we do the relocations now and we come back a year later and go underground, we will be able to save about 10% of those 342000 that we're talking about in salvage. That's really all we, we're going to be able to save. But if we were to start the underground today, we would barely have enough time to do it prior to the work coming, to, prior to the contractor coming in. Because the timeline, the way that it is right now, the contractor is probably going to start. I just got off the phone a few minutes ago with Mr. Cancino from the state. Uh, he anticipates uh, construction beginning the early part of December. In fact, he said December 1st. But, so he, December, the early December, which gives us about three months, three to four months from now to there. And then 
On the contract, we have a delay requirement on the construction work and Altos Road, which gives us a bigger time window to do the work. But even if we have seven months available, we're not going to have enough time to go underground because we don't know when, when the... What is the timeline on the road? What is the timeline on doing the relocation of the post? Well, the pole relocations, and please correct me, James, if I'm, if I'm wrong, uh, they, they're looking at about three to four months Just from the time that we notify them. And my goal is <coughs> if you approve this tonight, I'm going to notify them tomorrow. And they will be doing the pole relocation? They, yes, the BBS they would be in charge of doing all the pole relocations. Right. We've already determined the locations of the poles. Mm -hmm. We already pretty much determined the initial logistics of where to, you know, marking and verifying and everything. What is the, what is the cost of doing the underground now? The underground estimates were about one what? Uh, 1.8 million. 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 million to do it underground. It's around 2 million. Yeah, it's around 2 million. We're not going to hold this We don't get any salary than that. Well, <laughs> oh, so in addition, one of the things that we discussed this morning, and Eddie and I had been talking <clears> about it before, uh, and, and Donna, was to, to uh, prepare for the underground anyway. So, you know, since we're going to be doing the work, we're going to be putting the underground conduits ahead of time so that once we do the overlay and, and the, and the uh, road widening and everything that we're doing for the road work, we're going to have the conduits underground that, that cross the paving so we won't have to break up the paving later. So we're, we're already talking about that and, and we may, in fact, we're going to need to come back to you to have an idea of how to fund that. Uh, PUV is going to come up with where they want the conduits for that and then we'll need to come back for it. For that. We, we don't want to break any pavement. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, now the problem with that, and, and it's an, un an unavoidable problem, is that we are going to have to put that in advance of us getting the grant, which means that, that those expenses are not going to be grant refundable. or. or, or so we have some extra money that, that you have yes, to exactly. show, and I think Yeah, we still have to Budget wise, it's not going to be a problem. Exactly. Now, let me, let me ask you a question. What is the, when is the grant uh, allocation or the grant granting or whatever you call it? In other words, when will we know when, when, when will we, we have, know, when, we have, when, when are they expected grant? to uh, award, award grants? They are, well, we think they're going to do it either at the end of August or by mid-September. I mean, that's when they said they were going to do it. And we we hope that because this grant was was under the american recovery the stimulus money that they'll expedite that and give us the funds so that we could finish the remember those were the shovel ready and they yes. had to be completed within you know a year to 18 months period so i mean we're hoping so that that's what's going to happen but i mean if it if it's like the regular grants I mean, you remember just last board meeting, we we accepted a, a grant from 2009 that we won't get that money until probably 2012. If, if, if that's how, I mean, historically, that's how well, the cycles have been. But now, let me ask you this. If, since we have access to funds to fund underground, if we were awarded the grant, we can't ex we can't spend the money and then get reimbursed by the grant once it's done. Yeah, no, well, we were hoping it was best case scenario, and this if all the yeah. stars got aligned, say the grant award was announced at the end of this month, what we would try to do then would be to get in writing from them authorization to go ahead and proceed underground, so we'd have an ability to go back and recover whatever we would spend going forward. But, you know, again, the, the timing has to be just right. And whether or not we could get uh, expeditious approval to go ahead and, and proceed with the underground uh, uh, work ahead of announcement of grant award uh, in terms of here, this is when you can apply for the money. Uh, we w would want something for the record then that we could go back and say, okay, we, we funded the project ourselves or a good portion of it, reimburse us under the grant. But that means that all that has to occur very rapidly. And, 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 and given the timing of the award on the road improvements and when that needs to start, we, we may not have enough time to do that. If, I, w I would like us to try to do that if there's a way to do it. Because, I mean, I realize 
you know, three hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money to spend, especially to put poles up and then come and take poles down, because it's just like going to cut across the, putting in the pavement and cutting across the pavement. I mean, it's the same, same sin. So if we could put them underground and make the deal work, well, if we can't coordinate it, well, you know, the, the dealing with. That all the different bureaucracies and entities, because of the overlapping ways that the whole thing moves so slowly, uh, and I understand why they have it. Their safeguards and their cash flow and whatever. <laughs> but that—that's all given. But if we could get it done, I'd like us to at least make an attempt to try to do it. We work. We well, work hard. Yeah. We're going to make yeah. okay. every Good. attempt, but it'll well. be triggered by announcement of the award award of the grant. And this grant, because it's stimulus money, it's all 100 percent funded. And so it's, we're hoping and it's money that's already there. And if need be, you know, that was where we might warrant a trip to Washington to go get somebody in Washington to. Well, we will. We will unravel the whatever resources we have available to us. To 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 well, see, one recourse that we have, and I, I'm, I, I already, you know, what you're saying, I, I was exactly trying to do that with TxDOT when we met to discuss the relocation. And what I was hoping to do is get some sort of uh, leeway from TxDOT that we wouldn't move the polls if we got the grant. But they don't have, you know, because this is a federally funded project, three million out of the roads were is coming from federal. They don't have the leeway to give us to give us that permission, so to speak. Yeah, and we'll, we we'll we'll looked at different options. Well, yeah, the, yeah, alternative, uh, the alternative would be to prepare uh, as as the much as we can yes. the crossing so that you know we're. And really, I, I, you know, I, I told you the, before, uh, I'm not the prophet nor the son of a prophet. I know you've heard me say that before. <laughs> but there's no, I don't, I don't see any way that we can avoid spending those 324, right, those 348 right now. I really don't. I've, I've looked at every possible option. Unless, you have to do it. Unless we'll do it, but let's, let's yeah. prepare. Because I know the uh, crossings that we're going to make to go access land oh. on, the, yeah. on, the, on the south side of, of the south side. Channel Street, Postal Street. Uh, oh, it is an action. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so ahead. see what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. All right, do I have a motion? So moved. We got a motion by Commissioner Reed. Do I have a second? Second by Commissioner Arambula. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item carried. Good. Okay, back to uh, item number two. Okay, uh, public audience, we have no one signed up to speak at this time. All right. So item number three, receive court director's report. Item A, discussion of 2009 property tax. Um, we'll forego a lot of exciting discussion to talk about tax <laughs> for 2009. And, uh, in, in your packet, I think you, you've got a copy of the uh, tax rate calculation for 2009, and then Debbie's going to kind of come up and take us through that. And so uh, we, we thought that this is not an action item, this is just an information item. Uh, we probably will have to take some action. Uh, right now, we're planning to do this at our second meeting in September, but uh, before we do that, we thought it would be uh, prudent to discuss it and talk about potentially some options and what we're looking at. And so with that, I will turn it over to uh, Ms. Duke. The uh, first page that you have the, the legal sheet is uh, a publication that will be going in tomorrow, if the Herald gets right, if not, will be on Friday. It's required before we can go ahead and do anything else with our, our setting, and you've seen them all out there. It sets out our, our effective tax rate. And, it's, and it sets out our rollback tax rate. It's a notice to the public of what parameters we need to work within when we're setting a tax rate. Um, it, it tells an awful lot about what we got as taxes last year and what we what our rates were and then what our rates can be this year. At the bottom, you'll see our debt service, and that's what's going to be paid out of uh, taxes. In this, this levy that we do in 2009, it's the debt service that we pay in 2010. Uh, just real quickly, you, you can see that our current tax rate and the effective tax rate is virtually no difference. I mean, it's like three thousandths of a point. Uh, it, it, is, uh, uh, it is the same. It, it, if we go with the effective tax rate, and in fact, it, it has no change in our tax rate. Now, we are mindful that we are on a streak, uh, and that streak is like 17 years in a row where we've actually seen a reduction in the tax rate. And so, 
Um, and we know that that's a goal of this commission and certainly a goal of the staff. So uh, even though it may seem uh, somewhat uh, inconsequential, uh, we, 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 we do believe that there are some opportunities to actually drop that rate um, uh, to, to the extent that uh, you, you can see something that uh, would be adopted that would be below the effective tax rate and at the same time wouldn't affect us materially uh, as, as far as our, our financing goes. And, and that's when we get into kind of looking at the next page on, on some of these scenarios. On, on the next page, that top right corner, We'll show you the valuations that we're looking at. Typically, we see about a three hundred million dollar increase from year to year. You see, we're not getting very much of an increase this year. Uh, a lot of building is not not going on like it's been, and we had a lot of uh, reduction of value because of Dolly. Uh, buildings that are gone, buildings that have been damaged, and so a lot of you know, and we have a lot and the smarter <laughs> crisis is going on. We also had a lot of uh, valuations adjusted through the ARB meetings. Uh, people went in and, and got some were successful in the ARBs. Uh, first row here is, is what the last year's tax rate was. And every month we receive supplementals. Those, those values are changing all the time. And this is what we settled in with, that we raised $3.226 million in taxes. And we calculated an effective tax rate. And essentially they took everything that was on the tax rolls last year and took their values this year. What do we need to do to get the same money that we got last year? And that would be the 0.0486, that would give us 3.286 in, in levy taxes. Then we have the notice and hearing rate is something, it's a, a limit between, you can't go over that unless you publish additional notices, you have public hearings, then the public have an opportunity to come in. That's your lower, if you roll back, of your effective tax rate, and for us it is, it is our, our effective tax rate. Your rollback tax rate is another rate that you have that uh, if you go above that rate, the public has the right, and our interest is to come back and request that you go out for an election where they have the right to roll you back to that rate. Like an 8% margin <clears throat> or something like that? You add 8% to your effective tax rate and you get your debt rate. And our tax rate, our effective tax rate is so small that it's not much, that 8% is not much. But it, it does go, cover your, your debt rate 100% plus 8% on top of your effective. You can see the, the differences here is, is, is minimal. Um, for us to go and do a above the rollback rate and risk a $100,000 election, that's, that's never good. It's, <laughs> we don't ever think about that. The recommended rate here is, is uh, and I throw it out there, it's our debt rate, which always needs to be levy, plus the same M&O rate from last year. It gives us a slight reduction in the total rate, and that's that's just the starting point. If we want to talk about this as we go forward, we can we can adjust from there. That would raise 3.262 million dollars. It would get our M&O at 632,000, which is where we had, had hoped to be. We did our budget. The next page is uh, just an historical. <coughs> So, the only room we really have to play with is because we're in a certain bond covenant requirements is M&O. Exactly. So yes. that's the only thing we can we and can it's look such at. a small number, yes. There's a, a trend. There's a little, little, little room there. Yeah, so anyway, I just want to make sure that was clear to the commissioners. That's that's the only thing we can yeah. play with. And, and that, they have been. the recommended tax rate here does show a trend there, even in these times. But you know, what I'm going to allude to later is that when we start setting our budget, yes, that's where we're going to have to concentrate on how we can reduce if we want to truly continue to reduce taxes yes. and keep our historical trend. Is you got to look way, at ways to cut the M and O or increase revenues. All we can do. Okay. So, you know, I think you all have next. Uh, it's this one, this is just a uh, my historical. Um, we've done some comparisons on average homeowners. There's one that has a lot of columns, and there's one that has just a few. Which one should put next? The one that you're looking at that has just a few columns in it is is the effective tax rate. 
and I'm sorry, last year's tax rate and a proposed tax rate. And it shows the difference uh, on, oops. This, this one, right. okay. Yeah, that's right. Right. The first set of numbers is last year's tax rate on different values of homes. The $79,347 on not from the appraisal district, that is the average home value in our district. And then I took up some other ones that I know are out there. <coughs> and then the proposed is the, the 0 0.048253. You'll see that the differences are, are very minor, but they are down a little bit. Uh, but you can also see what the effect, the, our taxes on the, on an average home are very low, very minimal. The goal is still to keep. In and it is, and, and, and we, we, we are been doing very good. You know, 17 years in a row is, is quite a. Quite and, a and, and you know, the, the, it's certainly a lot easier to do when you see your values increasing every year, eight, nine, ten percent. The problem we have this year is that the <coughs> increase in values, and everybody's having the same problem. The only That's difference is, in our case, we're not talking about increasing taxes. You know, where, whereas you know we don't have that that issue or that problem, however you want to look at it. So because of the uh, co overall uh, ad valorem values, you know, it gives us, doesn't give us the kind of flexibility we've had in the past where I mean, we could talk about half a penny and look, it didn't do anything. Now, now we talk about a half a penny and it has a, a bank. But the other thing is that if you want to reverse that in the future to try to you know, generate any money for capital or whatever, it's so hard to get it up. And so uh, Commissioner Reed is right, this, this will work, but because we, we kind of, you know, our budget implications going forward are right now unclear. Uh, it, it, it's kind of hard to say, okay, we can go in there and I can tell you if you drop it a penny, you, you pretty much blow it off. That, that's because we don't have that, 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 that big of flexibility in, 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 the, in, the, in the values this year as we've had well, in the past. We, we want to have enough money to be able to take care of it. The, the proper course has had enough deferred maintenance to deal with. So keeping things current and moving forward and getting our court fixed up and you know, all the things we've got going is absolutely, you know, we, we need to take care of what we well, have. We're also going through a lot of cash this year. Yes, so sir, I know that. Yeah, sir, I, so. I know that. And so we're, yep, we're, we're tight, you're running a very tight ship and a tight budget and, and keeping good eye, you know, good eye on the money. And, I think we're on the right track. The, the next worksheet, uh, it's got a lot of little numbers on it, but it shows the trend of our taxes since 1996. And this year, if we go with the rate that is on the recommended rate, we will actually be within three cents under what our tax on an average home was in 1996. You know, rates have gone up and, and, and we fluctuate around, but the actual cash out of someone's pocket would be three cents less on that average home. The average home has gone from 35000 to 79000 in that, that period of time, and our taxes are still right at $35 on that, that same home. Uh, it really kind of serves to put our tax rate into perspective. That's another reason that I want to make sure that we have the boat ramp in good shape so that everybody has to pay that $35 and go fishing. That's right. Uh, the, the following pages are just how those numbers come, uh, the calculations, I, I put them out there um, just because it's part of the packet. If you're interested in the calculations, I can kind of explain how they go. self explanatory is very good. <laughs> um, we are planning on uh, letting y'all think about this for a while and coming back at the second meeting in September uh, to set the rates. Um, we will be able to set the rates in one meeting because I don't see us going above our limits. Uh, I think that's even something that we should consider. We can do like another one. We're not going to be dealing with how high. <coughs> far up above the effective tax that we have to go. Our dilemma is, you know, that the adjustment on, on, on how, how far down we can go and that we're following and, and continuing that, you know, I think that streak is important. So um, um, if you have opportunities to look at it, and certainly appreciate any comments going down because uh, uh, 
in our case, we'll be adopting the tax rate before we'll be adopting the budget. A lot of the entities that are on October 1 fiscal years deal with their budget and then their tax rate. We, we just, because of our January 1 line, then we'll be doing the, just the opposite. Right? And so, uh, but this gives you an opportunity to see. And one is that we didn't want you to see it in the paper for the first time without having an opportunity to at least discuss it here. Also, the majority of our money <coughs> Operating support does not come from that support. No, that's very little. If, if you, very, if you, very if you look little. at it, it's, it's, it's less we're, than 10 percent. Uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, we, we are not a you know, I like to tell people in my presentations, we're not a, 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 a tax driven in terms of uh, uh, operating uh, uh, on or depending on, on raising operating income through uh, ad valorem taxes. Uh, we're, we're, we're certainly in, in the bottom. Uh, probably 15% of the overlapping debt schedule in the community. I mean, our rate is even lower than the emergency services district rate, for example. You know, if you look at where our rate compares in the area, you know, we're up there with the water districts and the irrigation districts. It, it is not uh, certainly what I would consider to be, or say, a, a tax burden uh, uh, in terms of the amount. That's great. Yep. And Mr. Chairman, I just want to—I was sharing uh, with uh, our. Uh, Director, Mr. Gumpian. Actually, he was showing me the difference on the sheet where 1996, the average uh, tax rate that was collected was $38.32. You speed that up to 2009, period of 14 years. The average tax collected for a home now, 2009, $38.29. As, as compared to 14 years ago, 38. What is it? Thirty-eight dollars and thirty-two cents. That's awesome. And everything else has gone up, and, and we continue to bring that. We down. had a five-dollar minimum wage then. We have a seven-dollar twenty-five cent minimum wage now. So there's at least forty percent there that increasing. So I think we're it's great. Great. really doing well. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Duke. That uh, concludes the report. All right. Item number four, consideration and action on the following consent agenda items. A, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of August 5th, 2009. B, approval to authorize payments over $25,000. Item one, U.S. Corps of Engineers second installment of district share of the channel deepening feasibility study in the amount of $150,000. The resolution, that's in the consent? No. Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay, motion Second by Commissioner Lamula. Seconded by Commissioner Cowan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carry. Item number five, consideration and action on a proclamation honoring Paul Cowan for his dedication and years of service and proclaiming all matters thereof. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, as you may know, um, Mr. Cowan is, uh, is retiring from uh, his service to the state of Texas to uh, uh, to the District 27. Could you be uh, sure to say Paul Callan so they don't think it's me? Yeah. <laughs> Paul Callan. Uh, the uh, good looking, <coughs> younger brother, <laughs> uh, Ralph Callan, uh, is, is, uh, Banner, too. Yeah, is, is retiring at the end of, of the year. And, and I know Paul has uh, 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 you know, done a lot for a lot of people uh, throughout the district and throughout the state of Texas. And I know many of the uh, area entities are honoring him with a similar proclamation. So um, there will be an event on the 31st of August where uh, he will uh, be honored and, and perhaps even, uh, no doubt, uh, uh, learn some, some stories about uh, Paul's service to the people uh, of the state of Texas. And uh, this proclamation is, uh, again, presented for your consideration. Um, uh, just. Uh, 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 honoring Mr. Cowan for his years of service, not only to the port, but to uh, District 27, as well as uh, to the people of the state of Texas. And, uh, the proclamation is in your package, uh, and uh, it's up for your consideration. Okay. Do we have a motion? Motion, okay. Okay. motion by Commissioner Second. Lopez, seconded by Commissioner Aramula. All those in favor? Aye. Item <laughs> carries. And I'd like to uh, just read the proclamation uh, record for the the record, I, I did not make the motion because I didn't think it would be proper for me to make the motion <laughs> for my brother. So. Okay. It says, uh, Proclamation of the Board of Navigation and Canal Commissioners of the Brownsville Navigation District, honoring Paul Cowan, retiring Chief of Staff for Senator Eddie Lucio, Jr., 
retiring on August 31st, 2009, after 20 years of service and proclamating all matters thereof. Whereas the Port of Brownsville is pleased to recognize Paul Cowan on the occasion of his retirement after 20 years of faithful service to the citizens of South Texas. <coughs> and whereas Paul Cowan was on August 31st, 1949, born on the 4th, born the 4th out of 11 children in Brownsville, Texas, to Louis, Rafael, and Virginia Cowan. And whereas Paul attended Brownsville Public Schools and graduated from Brownsville High School in 1969. He was awarded a full scholarship to Pan American College in Edinburgh to serve as an assistant sports information director. And whereas at summer at a summer soccer game in college, Paul spotted a young woman, Tamara Parrish, who would become his bride, and they successfully raised three children, Tara Jean, uh, Jonathan Paul, and Timothy Patrick. Uh, also included in the apple of his eye, his only grandchild, Isabella Regino. And whereas always a participant in local politics, Paul became campaign treasurer for state representative Eddie Lucio Jr. in 1989, which quickly led to a staff position with Senator-elect Lucio's office in 1995. Paul was elevated to the position of chief of staff, which he has held for the last 14 years. And whereas on December 14, 1995, Senator Eddie Lucio Jr. and Paul Cowan were driving on the expressway in Harlingen when they witnessed a serious truck accident. Without regard for his own safety, he and another Good Samaritan were able to free a man who was trapped inside a burning truck. In honor of his heroic efforts, he was awarded the highest bestowed uh, by the Texas Department of Safety to a civilian, the Director's Award. And whereas Paul has been a very loyal state employee and his numerous or enormous contributions to the state government and to the people of Senate District 27, including his unwavering will to improve conditions for our community through major legislation that includes the partnership between the University of Texas Pan American and Texas Avalon College, creating South Texas College in Hidalgo and Star Counties, creating the Regional Academic Health Center and establishment of the future University of Texas Health Science Center in South Texas, now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of Navigation and Canal Commissioners of the Brownsville Navigation District honor Paul Cowan and extend to him sincerest appreciation for his many years of service he has shown to the Port of Brownsville and all of the people of South Texas. Be it further proclaimed that an official copy of this proclamation be prepared and presented to Paul Cowan as an expression of his high esteem for his service to the Port of Brownsville by the Board of Navigation and Canal Commissioners of Brownsville Navigation District proclaimed this 19th day of August, 2009. Move on to the... Item number seven, consideration and action on rescheduling the regular board meetings of September 2nd and 16th, 2009 at the Brownsville Navigation District Board of <coughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, asking to uh, reschedule the regular meetings of the 2nd and 16th to the 9th and the 23rd. Um, there's some staff travel involved and uh, also some commission travel on the regularly scheduled dates and this would allow us to go ahead and conduct business. I will tell you that we will have a busy September as it relates to uh, 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 items before uh, the commission, so it, it is important that we uh, we do meet twice uh, in, in September. All right, we have a motion. No, so Mr. Chairman. We got a motion by Commissioner Lopez, seconded by Commissioner Arambula. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item number eight, consideration and action to review the investment policy and the investment strategy and to adopt a resolution certifying that the investment policy and the investment strategy have been reviewed and have been adopted by the board. This is something that we need to do every year, even though well, we're recommending no changes. Um, we're going to ask the board to go ahead and, and adopt this resolution. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? So do we have a motion? Motion, motion by Commissioner Lopez. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Reed. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item number nine, consideration and action on assignments, negotiations, easements, subleases, and contracts in general. Item one, new diesel and authority to negotiate. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. 
Nova Diesel on the contract 3205 is requesting to lease um, X site in, um, intercells, which is across the street on FM 511. Um, they're right now at the Port Office Complex. And uh, they received notice from us that you know, we've been awarded uh, a grant uh, to convert that uh, building to um, the command center for the police department. And so uh, they're asking uh, to uh, lease this property across the street. So I'm asking the board to be first to negotiate with them. Do we have a motion? Motion, Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry. Do we have a motion by Commissioner Lopez, seconded by Commissioner Cowan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, carries. Item number 10, consideration and action on proposal for the industrial newspaper staying healthy for advertising at Port of Roswell and Madison. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, this item is tabled from uh, the last meeting. Uh, you do have a memo in your package kind of uh, uh, going over some of the questions that were raised at the last meeting. Uh, we did meet with uh, Ms. Gabby Perez and Ms. Dayanita Blanco, who are here today. Uh, also, I guess somebody else is accompanying if there's any questions. Uh, questions that came up regarded uh, the distribution of the publication. It is approximately 10,000. It is distributed in the Rio Grande Valley, Matamoros, Reynosa, Rio Bravo, Ciudad Victoria, Tampico, and parts of Monterrey. Um, the, the way it's proposed, in effect, is that uh, we would uh, commit to, uh, in effect, have uh, uh, advertising space, and what we're recommending is the amount of $66,000. Um, I'm sorry, six hundred dollars, and uh, it would be at our discretion on how we use up that space, whether it's over a year period or a ten month period or shorter. Um, also, uh, uh, one of the things that uh, um, uh, if, if, if there's going to be uh, editorial uh, uh, where the staff will do themselves, we, we will have. Uh, the editorial approval uh, for uh, what goes in the content of the publication. Um, we also, I guess you could say, we negotiated where uh, if we, uh, part of this will include if, if, if we purchase a half page and we get the half page free. I will tell you that we've used this publication in the past. It has been part of the port's um, advertising mix. Uh, the issues in the past were not so much with the, the distribution or, or it had to do a lot with the quality of, of, of the uh, editorial content of the quality publication. There have been some changes uh, with the organization. I think that uh, they certainly have given us our assurances that that um, uh, it's all of the improvements have been for the better, uh, resolved a lot of our concerns in the past. I think they provided you examples of, of their publication and the work that they do. And, and certainly, um, uh, we think that this is a, you know, a, a fair uh, proposal as it relates to what we've been able to sit down and, and knock out. So, unless you have any special questions or other comments of the representatives here, I have a, I have a quote. I'm sorry. Um, why, having why is this before the board? If you have a limit of twenty-five thousand. Why are we discussing a sixty-six hundred dollar well, expenditure? Quite candidly, because the proposal came to the board, you know, we didn't see it until after it had been presented to the board. So, uh, it was presented to the board. The request that the, uh, the chairman could place this item on the agenda. I just think we're, I mean, either we have a policy in place where the CEO has the limits of $25,000 and he acts on that, or we reduce it and the board's going to start looking at it. I'm not sure why we're even talking about a sixty-six hundred dollar item here. I'm not saying it's good or bad as far as the advertising. I'm just <coughs> wondering why we're, we're we're even discussing a sixty-six hundred dollar item. Okay. Well, I think I, and I, the reason why I wanted it on here was this one along with other the other there was another item that we had uh, at the previous uh, meeting was because I wanted to emphasize that uh, I wanted to. Uh, basically uh, for the poor uh, to have a local presence as far as uh, advertisements uh, where uh, travelers uh, and local uh, businesses uh, uh, are aware that the port is here and what the port has to offer um, and this publication is one of those uh, that's, uh, and one of the reasons why we tabled it was uh, to see what their their circulation is and where it's distributed and, 
and based on this distribution, it covers all the valley, it covers Matamoros, Reynosa, and all the way to parts of Monterrey. And, and, and uh, I think uh, it's a good publication, and, and based on what Mr. Campirano has uh, uh, stated, they have improved, and we have uh, uh, basically control of, of what we're going to publish and how we're going to publish and when we, we're going to publish. So. Uh, that's the reason why it's on there. I had asked that it be put it on here, um, and that's basically it. Maybe is this you recommend you doing this? I think once we've had an opportunity to sit down, discuss the proposal, I kind of go over the concerns and so forth. And like I said, it has been in an advertising mix in the past. Uh, we do use their sister company in Monterrey, uh, but we don't have a problem with it. But then I'd like to make a motion to do it. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Cowan to have a second. I'll, I'll second that with, uh, I just had a question for, for the gentleman and whoever can answer this. Is, you know, I just, the, the circulation is in Mexico, the majority that you're, that you're having out there, correct? Right. Uh, the, the type of clientele that you folks solicit or that these publications are going to, can you give me an overview of what type of companies that are receiving this? And then, uh, secondly, um, the, I guess, I think you already mentioned the, the circulation amount, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, we, we are appointing all to the management people, not the company. Okay. And actually, could, also... Could you, uh, could you step up to yeah. the microphone? Okay. This, is, this publication now is part of a new company, as uh, Mr. Campirano said. We are changing now, and we have this uh, new publication. Also, all the all the market that we are pointing to is a, all the management people, not the companies. Okay. Well, also we have the the proposal for you, but we are trying to give some information on. CD, electrical files, okay, video. You get all the information and we could send it directly to the, the right people. Okay. Attached with the, the magazine. Okay. That, that we are doing. Also, in this company, we have all the promotional products. We are having everything to promote every, all the campaigns. I don't know if that answered your question. Yes, sir. They, they target a lot of the maquilas. They target some of the companies that you know, we would go after. In addition to, uh, 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 it's, it's mostly an industrial manufacturing base uh, circulation. Uh, that they do distribute it in public places. Uh, but you can see from some of the advertising, it's, it, it is kind of geared towards the is like the uh, manufacturing uh, in, in the area. When was the last time we ever talked about uh, Well, like I said, we do the sister publication on the way, but we didn't do it all, I think. Uh, we stopped doing this publication in 2007. So we didn't do it all last year. Uh, and uh, uh, We did have the one with well, the state of the port. That, 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 that was a complimentary on yeah. their behalf. Uh, it was, it was nice. not. Uh, the only thing that we... Uh, the, the only input we had on that was to ensure that uh, there was no changes to the ring and, and that it was the full piece. Uh, but that was, at, they asked us if they, we could do it, they, they offered to do it complimentary, and so uh, that's why it was done. It wasn't, uh, uh, you know, that they, they essentially agreed to and approached the court to, to do that as, as a complimentary piece. So uh, before that, it had been probably a year and a half. Uh, 18 months to, to when we did not use the publication. Also, in the, in the case of our operation, it's changing everything. We have that. Our, now we are paid by everything. It's okay before we're going to the final product. And then I think they know that they, they, they will deal directly with the staff going forward on, on any of the editorial content. So we, we, we went over all that. Okay. 
Will they, will they send it uh, like a proof read yeah. before it yeah. actually? Yes. yes. Uh, and also, uh, if, if you notice, uh, uh, if, if we have something that we feel that we will publish where uh, we, we, in effect, have prepared and we provided the editorial copy, then we'll yeah, present it to them for publishing. So, uh, or if they cover an event for us and they come, and, uh, uh, an example is uh, uh, they were here when we had the uh, sea bridge uh, 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 ribbon cutting and so forth. And uh, if we have a similar event, and they provide the editorial copy, then we have an opportunity to have all editorial approval before it gets published. Would you be able to cover the, uh, the Monterrey uh, trade show that we'll be doing? Well, they, they would, but like I said, we're kind of, they, they used to be sister companies. I guess they're not anymore. They've broken up, but we are using industrial communities in Monterrey for them. It's okay. now two separate companies as we understand it. Okay. All right. We got a motion. We got a second. Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Carries. We've got uh, uh, turn into executive session. It is 6:42. Uh, we're in right at turn into executive session. Yes. <laughs>